Hello, my name's Rachel and I work for Step 2 Young People's Health based in Bradford. This video is about parenting. So, just to look at pregnancy first, during the pregnancy you need to start planning and preparing for when you are going to be a parent. You might need to attend antenatal appointments to support the care of you and your baby. You might need to prepare for making connections with services, those who are going to support you on your journey into parenthood. And making preparations as you get ready to welcome your new baby, all while balancing busy daily lives and potentially welcoming a second, third, fourth or fifth child into your household. At the birth, there's lots of support available from midwives and health visitors. You can do pregnancy classes uh, before the baby is born that will help you to understand what is going to happen during the process. If it's your first baby, it can understandably be quite intimidating and a bit scary about what's going to happen. But there are lots of support services that can inform you, offer you advice. There are websites like Mumsnet where you can go on and speak to other mums about their experiences. There is support available everywhere and thanks to the internet we can access that quite easily. Okay, so mum's partner, it might be dad, it could be a second mum. They're also going to experience this pregnancy and the birth and becoming a parent and it can be really really frightening for them because the support available to them is slightly less they're not the one who's physically going through the experience of pregnancy and childbirth so it can be really really overwhelming for them they don't know what it feels like they don't know how their partner's feeling partners pregnant ladies can get very very stressed they can get very emotional and that emotion is going to pass on to their partner but their partner might struggle a little bit with having that connection. They need to support their partner, but they're also potentially thinking, wow, this is really scary. What they can do to prepare for the birth is to read. They can sing or they can talk to the baby before birth. When the baby is born, they will remember that voice. They won't know who it is. They won't be able to associate that kind of relationship yet, but they will recognise that voice and they will know that it means they're safe. They can also attend classes alongside the baby's mum. And they can help by promoting a healthy lifestyle in the house. Now, some pregnant women crave all kinds of random foods. They want McDonald's at four o'clock in the morning so they can dip the fries into the strawberry milkshakes and other random concoctions of food. By helping and cooking meals and keeping everybody healthy in the home they are preparing for the arrival of the baby and keeping mum nice and strong and fit there are support schemes that are available for certain families so the nhs healthy start scheme provides milk fruit and veg to expectant mums it can also provide infant milk and vitamins for families with children under four but this is only available for families that are on benefits or mums who are under the age of 18. if you fall into one of those categories do not be afraid to ask for this this is your right the NHS will provide this for you and it will help you out considerably in the first few years There's lots of things to take into account when you're bringing a new baby into the house or when you have a child growing up in a household. And a lot of that is around safety planning. So it's about keeping things out of reach of your toddler. So you can see just above the little girl's head that there is a soap and possibly a washing up sponge. They would not be safe things to leave around where a child could reach them. You might consider putting baby gates on so that um, children can't get up or down the stairs or so they can't leave the room where, they, where you are keeping an eye on them. You might want cupboard locks, especially in the kitchen. Now, I'm not necessarily talking padlocks like you can see in the picture there. There are lots of little contraptions that you can get for keeping your cupboard closed because once toddlers work out that things make a noise, they can quite often um, enjoy getting into the pan cupboard and banging things around. You've got to be careful of choking hazards. If you leave anything at a height where a child can get it, babies learn by putting things in their mouths. So if they're putting things in their mouths that are laid around, for example, a 2p coin that you've taken out your pocket and left on the table, that is a considerable choking hazard for a child. 
you need to consider things like appropriate toys. Um, there are age ranges usually given as a, a, a sort of advisory on toys, but anything that has small lithium batteries in it, they need to be appropriately stored. They need You need to make sure that the battery compartment is screwed in because if you swallow a lithium battery, it could kill you. Fixed furniture. Say if you go to Ikea, you always get the contraption, like an L-shaped bracket, to fix your furniture to you all. And that's because if a child starts to climb up a bookcase and it's not fixed to the wall, chances are that bookcase is going to fall on top of them and that's really dangerous. You have to consider things like plants, something you've probably never considered before. You've just had nice plants in your house. But actually, some plants can be toxic if a child gets to it and starts sucking on the leaves. There's loads and loads of things that you have to think about. But the good thing is there's loads of books, loads of leaflets, loads of resources to help you plan for this. It's something that you could start considering during your pregnancy. OK, so a newborn baby is not going to get anywhere near a plant. But if you start setting those routines into place for you and start getting your brain around all these things that you have to consider now, then it's going to be much easier once the child does start crawling, walking, whatever. As your child gets older, their behaviour is going to change significantly. You may well have heard of the terrible twos, a little tantrum phase where children, if they aren't getting what they want, they'll throw themselves on the floor, they'll pound the floor, they'll cry, they'll scream, they'll argue. That is part of a normal development. It's completely normal at that age. And it can kind of present itself again in a familiar way when they are um, preparing to become a teenager and when they are a teenager. And that's because parts of the brain are still not fully developed yet and they won't be until about the age of 25. The risk centre in a teenager's brain, that's not fully developed yet. So they will take all kinds of risks, not realising that they are actually risks. Or they'll just think, oh, it'll be fine. Nothing's going to happen. I'll be all right. And that's not because they're being blasé about it. That's because that part of their brain is not fully developed yet. So they will push boundaries. They will ignore rules and things that have been in place for a long time, because, like I said, that risk centre is just not developed yet. And they'll just think, oh, I'll be right. Their hormones are starting to come into play as teenagers, and that causes all kinds of issues as well, because they affect your behaviour on their own. They can make people really emotional. They can make people angry. And there's that level of wanting to explore yourself and who you're becoming. And by listening to mum and dad at every single step of the way, you are not doing that. So you've got to be prepared for the teenage years that can be a bit of a challenge. But you do have time to prepare for that. You know, you've got 13 years to prepare yourself for the fact that at some point your teenager is going to suddenly change and their attitude and behaviour is going to be very different. But they do settle back down eventually. Again, safety planning, not in terms of you need to lock your cupboards and things and you need to keep plants out the way of a teenager. But you might need to be thinking about what time do you need to be? Do they need to be home? Do they need a mobile phone so that you can communicate with them? Uh, who are their friends? Who are they staying out with? That kind of safety planning. There's a list of useful sites there. There are absolutely loads out there, but I've just tried to pick out some some key sites for you about becoming a parent, becoming a new parent, um, how that kind of impacts on the family as a whole and what support services are in place. The last one is NCT and I'll talk about those in a second. So you've got the NCT logo at the top of the page there and they run parenting courses and lots of people find these ex extremely helpful. They go on them before the baby is born. So they're antenatal classes and they will tell you what to expect. They'll talk about breastfeeding. They'll talk about the birth. They'll talk about the first thousand days and how to support your child to the fullest so that they have um, good development 
and can go on to live a really healthy life. Relate is a relationship charity and they have some really good information on their website about being a new parent and the impact that that can have on relationships. Family Action, they operate in Bradford and other areas around the country and again they can give advice and guidance. The NHS is a great place to start because you will have uh, your midwife in place leading up to the birth and then after that you'll have a health visitor and they'll be helping you with things like breastfeeding um, or various other elements of the health kind of aspect of having a baby. Step 2 James and Hale are working together to deliver a contract for Bradford Council around uh, relationships and sex education across the district. So you can get in touch with any of us to ask us questions about things. Um, you can see the Step 2 website and social media handles there and you're more than welcome to go on those and communicate with us through there. We also obviously have this YouTube channel and there is a website, there is a newsletter sorry, on our website that professionals can sign up to if they so choose. Um, Bernardo's is obviously a children's charity, so they provide lots of information and guidance around raising children, doing that safely and what it's like to be a parent.